Hey friends, welcome and or welcome back to my channel. I'm Madonna and on this channel we talk about all things stories and self-care. So books that we love, books that we want to read, authors that we love, and self-care. So if you're interested in that sort of content, definitely, definitely subscribe down below and also hit the notification bell so that you're notified of every single time that I upload. Also follow me on Instagram and Twitter, Adana L. Today I am really excited to do this video to talk about all of the books that I read this quarter. So from April to now we're in June. So all the books that I read from April to June. This probably is going to be a long one. I read quite a few books uh, this quarter. So I have a cup of coffee, um, just a sip one. So go ahead and grab something and we'll get right into it. All right, so huh, I'm excited to do this. For the month of April, I actually had a decent month and only because I really enjoyed the books that I read. I didn't read a lot. I only read two books, two books this month, but I really enjoyed the quality of what I read. I think that they were really, for the most part, lighthearted and easy reads. I kind of had a, a reading slump in April, I think because I read a lot in March and a lot of like heavier books in March. And so April for me, it was my birthday month. I just wanted to buy books <laughs> and actually not read them. I went on vacation. I had a lot of different things going on in April. So even though I did not read a ton, I really enjoyed the books that I did read. The first book that I read was Truly Devious by Maureen Brown. And I'm gonna go ahead and read the synopsis or part of the synopsis on, from Goodreads. Allingham Academy is a famous private school in Vermont for the biggest thinkers, inventors, and artists. It was invented by Albert Ellingham, an early 20th century tycoon who wanted to make a wonderful place full of riddles, twisting pathways, and gardens. A place, he said, where learning is a game. Shortly after the school opened, his wife and daughter were kidnapped. The only real clue was a mocking riddle listing methods of murder signed with a frightening pseudonym, Truly Devious. So Stevie Bell, who's the main character in this story, comes and is granted the opportunity to come to the school that Albert Ellingham had created so many years ago. And she loves, you know, crime. She is probably one of those like, you know, murder crime junkies, true crime junkies, as they're called now. Just loved that whole world, loved mysteries, loved solving things, really looked up to Agatha Christie and, and people like that. And her gift or her talent is uh, the fact that she is just a, she loves mysteries. And so she is able to come to this school. And when she's there, there actually is a crime that is committed while she's there. And so while she came there to try to solve the past history of what happened to Albert Ellingham's wife and daughter, she actually also is solving a modern day crime as well. I thought that this book was fantastic well it's not fantastic i thought it was really really cute and really a really good read i love agatha christie i love those you know who done it crime style books or stories and this one was a cute you know high school version light uh, version of that sort of that sort of thing and so for that i rated it i believe three uh out of five stars like it wasn't a you know page turner like oh my god i didn't see that coming sort of book but it was it, it kept you know it was light it was engaging and so i really enjoyed it and so that's why i rated it three out of five stars and i would recommend that you read it if you like those types of books the next book that i read in april was actually probably my favorite i know i only read two books but it was my favorite book um out of the two and it is gods of jade and shadow by sylvia moreno garcia I actually had the pleasure of being able to read this while I was on vacation and on my birthday. And I'm gonna actually read an excerpt of the synopsis on Goodreads. And it says, the Mayan god of death sends a young woman on a harrowing, life-changing journey in this one-of-a-kind fairy tale inspired by Mexican folklore. The jazz age is full in swing, but Cassie Piatun is too busy cleaning the house and floors of her wealthy grandfather's home. Nevertheless, she dreams of a life that she can call her own. Yet this new life seems 
seems as distant as a star until the day she finds a curious wooden box in her grandfather's home. She opens it and accidentally frees the Mayan god, who requests her help in recovering his throne from his treacherous brother. You would think that a story about a deaf god would be hard to read. Um, it wasn't. It was such a cute, feel-good story. One thing that I really loved about this story is, one, I was able to learn a little bit about the Mexican folklore and about some of the traditions and um, culture uh, of Mexico. Loved that this book really just put a smile on my face. At every, <laughs> I think I even put it in that review, which if you haven't watched it, go ahead and, and watch it. I'm gonna link it here. I put in that review that I, it just made my heart smile. Like there's seldom many books that just make you say, well, that was cute. Like I love that, you know? So I really, I really felt that every single chapter, every single page, I was just like, this is such a cute book and I loved it. So I rated it four out of five stars and it was my favorite book of the month of April. All right, so for May, now, May, let me tell you, be May. I may have been reading a lot of books. Sorry, that was, that was a really terrible, terrible dad joke. Anyway, I read a lot of books in May and I had some mixed reviews with some of the books that I read. I think I read a lot of books that were hyped up or had a lot of hype around them. I read some books and those books lived up to the hype. And I read some books that were really hyped up and they were a really big disappointment. However, I read five books this month and each one of them was something that I needed to read or needed to experience and I'm glad that I did. So the first book that I actually read is Jade City by Fonda Lee. I'm gonna go ahead and read the Goodreads synopsis. The Call family is one of two crime syndicates that control the island of Kikon. It's the only place in the world that produces rare magical jade, which grants those with the right training and heritage superhuman abilities. The Greenbones are warriors that wear jade that once protected the people of Kikon. But nowadays, Kikon is a metropolis city and full of fast cars and fast money. And uh, the Greenbone families, like the Calls, are primarily involved in like e-commerce, construction, and everyday upkeep of the districts that they oversee. However, there is a clash between the Call family and the Mountain Bone family. And so it's talking about how these, it's setting up the story of how essentially these two great families are at war with one another and go after one another. And some members of the clan are trying to find peace. Other members are just, have war in their eyes and that's all they see. So it was, a book for me that missed the mark, I rated it two out of five stars because I did finish it. So I rate a book that I don't finish one out of five stars, but I finished it. So it was a two out of five. I didn't really love it, but I rated it that because I liked the premise of the story, but it just didn't give what it was supposed to have gave, you know? So yeah, I just didn't really connect with it as much as I thought I would have. Again, I like the premise, but I just, it didn't connect with me. And so I rated it two out of five stars. Now the next book, the next book, honey, I loved this book. It is The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo by Taylor Reed Jenkins. And let's, let's just, let's just roll that beautiful bean footage. Aging and reclusive Hollywood movie icon, Evelyn Hugo is finally ready to tell the truth about her clamorous and scandalous life. But when she chooses unknown magazine reporter, Monique Grant for the job, no one is more astounded than Monique herself. Why her? Why now? Monique is not exactly on top of the world. Her husband has left her and even her professional life is going nowhere. Regardless, Evelyn has chosen her to write her story and Monique is determined to use this opportunity to jumpstart her career. From making her way to Los Angeles in the 1950s to her decision to leave show business in the 80s and of course the seven husbands along the way, Evelyn unspools a tale of ruthless ambition, unexpected friendship, and a great forbidden love. Monique begins to feel a real connection to the legendary star, but as Evelyn's story nears its conclusion, it becomes clear that her life intersects with Monique's in a tragic and irreversible way. Now, let me tell you, that book was one of the books that I love so much that I had to add it to my top books that you need to read in your 20s. If you haven't watched that video, definitely take a gander and, and check that out. It is such a, one of those books that just has so many life lessons in it and has so many key themes 
that someone should should understand. So things like being your whole and true self, keeping family close, making the family that you need to make and, and keeping them close. I really truly love this book. It was one of the types of the books that I like almost raced through. Like I could not put it down. I could not stop reading it. I was missing work meetings at work. Like I just did not care. Nothing mattered except for that book while I was reading it. And it was definitely a good book for me to be able to get out of a reading slump. I recommend if you're looking for like a feel good, transformative story where you're kind of getting the opportunities to see a character recount their life in a way that helps you to learn something, I would definitely 100% recommend this book. I loved it, five stars and a well-deserved five stars for me. The next book that I read in May is Cinderella is Dead by Kaylin Barron. And it was a really good book. I, I enjoyed it. It had some key themes that I, I just love. And I'm gonna go ahead and read the Goodreads synopsis. It's 200 years after Cinderella found her prince, but the fairy tale is over. Teen girls are now required to appear at the annual ball where the men of the kingdom select wives based on a girl's display of finery. If a suitable, suitable match is not found, the girls that are not chosen are never heard from again. 16 year old Sophie would much rather marry Aaron, her childhood best friend, than parade around in front of suitors. At the ball, Sophie makes the decision to flee and finds herself hiding. She meets Constance, the last known descendant of Cinderella and her stepsisters. Together, they vowed to bring down the kingdom once and for all. And in the process, they learned that there's more to Cinderella's story than they ever knew. So I really enjoyed this book because there are a lot of key themes in it that I really like to, uh, that really resonate with me as a reader. The idea the idea of dismantling patriarchy, the idea of just taking a classic fairy tale story and twisting it so that you have, you know, themes of sexuality that come through, you have themes of womanhood and elevating women. And I just really enjoyed how the author was able to, again, take that classic story and present us a different story, present us something that we could say, well, that's well and good, but what if it happened this way? What would that mean? How would that look like? What would that world look like? And I thought the author did that really beautifully. I loved it and I rated it four out of five stars. It wasn't a knockout, especially after reading The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo, but I really did enjoy it never nevertheless. So I rated it four stars and I would recommend reading it if you love that sort of, those sort of topics or that sort of a book. So the last book that I read in May is The House in the Cerulean Sea by TJ Klune. Now this one really was hyped up, a lot of hype around this book. And this book, I don't think it, it disappointed for me. So let me go ahead and read the Goodreads description. Linnaeus Baker leads a quiet, solitary life. At 40, he lives in a tiny house with a devious cat and old records. As a caseworker at the Department of, of Charge of Magical Youth, he spends his days overseeing the well-being of children in government-sanctioned orphanages. When Linnaeus is unexpectedly summoned by extremely upper management, he's given a curious and highly classified assignment to travel to Marseilles Island Orphanage, where six dangerous children reside. A known a sprite, a wyvern, an undefiable green blob, a were Pomeranian, and the Antichrist. Linnaeus must set aside his fears and determine whether or not they're likely to bring about the end of days. But the children aren't the only secret the island keeps. So this book was really cute. Again, it had a, a lot of themes uh, or a lot of key themes that I like to read. So again, we have sexuality that is discussed. We have just the idea almost of like maybe racism or different is um, ableism that comes through where you have people or children that are different abled or have different abilities and they're not treated the same as like normal quote unquote children would be treated and it explores the idea of well they're just children like they should be able to have the ability to explore life as any child would. I really enjoyed the fact that the author just kind of wrote it as Linnaeus is this person that has this you know solitary standard life where he he doesn't open his eyes to different things until he's given this assignment and he's forced to kind of look at the world a little differently after this assignment, after he's able to interact with these children, spend time with them, understand who they are as people. It just kind of goes back to the idea of, you know, people in the world, if we step outside of our comfort zone, steps outside of the world that we know, whether that's by traveling, whether that's by moving to another city or another state or another country and seeing how other people 
people that are different from you live, that gives us a little bit more compassion and a little bit more empathy for people that are different from us. And I loved how the author was able to weave that through in a in a way that it's it, it's almost like made for like a child to understand and, and definitely so for, for adults. So I really liked it. I rated it five out of five stars and, and really enjoyed it. All right, so in June, I have also not read a lot of books. I have read so far two, and I'm starting on my third right now. But I, I don't know, I'm getting kind of in a sort of a reading slump this month. I haven't really felt the need or felt gravitated toward any towards any books. So I only read two, and I have a review on one of them and just finished another one and don't haven't talked about it. But the first book that I read, and it was amazing, a page turner, is The Girl with the Louding Voice by Abby Dare. So according to Goodreads, despite the seemingly unsurmountable obstacles in her path, Adeni never loses sight of her goal of escaping a life of poverty she was born into so she can build a future for herself and help other girls that are like her do the same. Her spirit to determination to find joy and hope in even the most difficult circumstances imaginable will break your heart and then put it back together again. Even as a Dunny shows us how one courageous young girl can inspire us all to reach our dreams and maybe even change the world. I love this book. I really did. If you haven't already, go ahead and check my full review up here. I have it linked up here where I go into depth from everything from the synopsis that I kind of briefly went over, as well as what I thought about the book cover, what I thought about what my favorite character was, what I gave it in terms of a rating, and just some of the key themes that were really prevalent in that book. But I, I just, I really enjoyed this book. I gave it five out of five stars. And one of the reasons that I love this so much is that one, it was a book that I, really can kind of see myself in the main character. It's about a woman who's in uh, Nigeria, um, in Lagos. I connect with her just from that perspective of we are from the same country. But I also connect with her because that desire to want to learn, that desire to want to understand the world that's around you, to pull yourself out of unfortunate circumstances is something that I think a lot of people can identify with, but I, I actually really do identify with. And so I see myself in a Denny and I see myself in her grit and her determination and her her joy even, her um, her laughter, her, her ability to be able to see the joy in certain situations. Unfortunately, also I can see myself, my innocence in her. For a long time, you know, I identified with her in terms of just not knowing things and not being aware of certain things. And because of her story, because of, I've been able to connect with that, I, I it just, it, it's a story that just kind of, every single time I have the opportunity to tell and recommend someone hey go read this book I will because I I loved it so much so I rated it a five out of five stars and again if I haven't convinced you now go ahead and watch the video where I do the full review and I really think that you should read this book I, I really truly enjoyed it and then the second book that I've read so far in the month of June is a book called Her Last Breath by Hilary Davidson this is a book that I came across on Amazon Prime Reads so as a Prime member I have access to selections of, of their books that they have for prime readers to be able to have access to for free and it was a thriller you guys know I love thrillers I love mysteries and so I was like yeah, yeah let me see let me see what it what's about so from Goodreads when her beloved sister Caroline dies suddenly Deidre is heartbroken however her sorrow tones to bone chilling confusion when she receives a message Caroline sent days earlier warning that her death would be no accident long used to being a par pariah in her family Deidre covers her tattoos and heads to Manhattan for her sister's funeral. The message claimed Caroline's husband, Theo, killed his first wife and got away with it. Reeling from the news, Deidre confronts Theo on the way to the cemetery, on the way to the cemetery, and he reveals both his temper and his suspicion that Deidre's perfect sister was having an affair. Paranoid and armed with just enough information to make her dangerous, Deidre digs into the disturbing secrets buried with Caroline. But as she gets closer to the, tr to the truth, she realizes that her own life may be at risk and that there might be more than one killer in the family. So I liked this book. In terms of thrillers, it was it was okay. It was it was it was not terrible. It was not not bad, but it wasn't also the best thriller I've ever read. So a key theme that was really prevalent through this book is the idea of gaslighting. How it's so easy to gaslight someone or be gaslit. Gas gaslit. Gaslighten. To be to have someone gaslight you. It was really sad how people play psychological games and how it affects people. 
So without spoiling too much of the story, I think if you have access to to it, just you know, a Kindle version or maybe at your library, I would I would suggest reading it. It was a it was a good read, but it wasn't like the best read that I've I've read. I rated it three out of five stars, like I said, so just okay, but wasn't like the most like oh my god, you guys got to read this kind of kind of story. So, but yeah, that was uh, her last breath by Hilary Davidson. All right, and so that is it. That those are all of the books that I read through the month of April, May, and June. I definitely think that I am outpacing my Goodreads goal, which is 30 books this year. I think I'm right now three books ahead of schedule, but I I've loved the books that I've read so far and I've even ranked them. This is going to be able to help me at the end of the year to do a full ranking of the order of the books that I've read. So if I were to go ahead and say what I think my least favorite book of this quarter would be, I mean, I unfortunately it is Jade City by Fonda Lee. I rated it two out of five stars, which is the lowest rating that I've given any book in this list um, that I've gone through in this video. It just didn't connect with me. Good premise, but just, just wasn't for me. So that leaves my favorite. My favorite book, it's gonna be a hard one because I had a lot of five star books that I read <laughs> the last couple of months. It would have to be between obviously The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo, The Girl with the Louding Voice by Abby Dare, and The House in the Cerulean Sea. So if I had to choose out of those three, oh, I'm gonna definitely have to say The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo. This was a book that for me, if it makes it onto my transformational you must read top you know books to read in your lifetime um, because of the life lessons that it gives you it would it would be it would be this book this book definitely made that list and there are still lessons that sit with me even now I haven't even reread it yet but I'm still thinking about Evelyn's story and how she told her life in a way that she lived a full life but she also had regrets or some regrets in some in some of her actions so just being able to read a book and have a character that I can emulate in a way where it's like live your life to the fullest, but also be careful and consider these these different things is, is a book that I have to, I have to say is is something that I think was, was my favorite. So I would say The Seven as Husbands of Evelyn Hugo is my top choice of this quarter. So I hope that you enjoyed this video. Definitely subscribe down below if you haven't already and also hit the notification bell so that you're notified every single time that I upload. If you did like this video, definitely give it a thumbs up. I, guys, you don't understand. It really does help with putting this channel in front of other people and so it helps grow this channel. I want other people to be able to have access to understanding like what books they should read and what books maybe they uh, shouldn't read or maybe maybe reconsider, let's say not shouldn't read, but maybe reconsider. And so I really hope that I can grow this channel and put it in front of more people and just kind of grow this community. So giving it a thumbs up definitely helps with that. But either way, thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next one. Bye. At the ball, Su Sophie makes the decision. Did I say Su Susie? Sophie, sorry. Sophie makes the de desperate decision to flee and finds herself hiding in Cinderella's Mm -hmm. There she meets Constance. Their caretaker is the charming and enigmatic.